Hello and welcome to a new series that we're going to be doing here on the channel and that I'm very excited to be doing, Clan Generator. I was going back and forth about exactly what kind of series I wanted to do with this to kick it off and I ultimately decided that it'd be really fun to do basically like original Shadow Clan run where we're prioritizing bloodthirsty cats. Uh, cats that are ambitious because that tends to come with negative traits in this game, even though I personally don't think ambition is necessarily a bad thing to do. Uh, so we'll just be prioritizing basically the traits that you normally don't want to see in this run. And part of that is also going to be antagonizing every single thing that we possibly can. So we're going to be playing on the harder difficulties, antagonizing everything that we can, and we must always proceed on patrols. So there is a high likelihood that this series will not continue for very long, but I have a few other challenges in mind that I will do if this doesn't end up lasting as long as I'm hoping that it will. If you do hear anything in the background, I apologize. There's construction going on across the street, and there's always construction going on across the street whenever I can record. So, if you hear anything weird, that's probably all that it is. So before we hop into the actual clan, let's go ahead and go over settings. So since we're doing an evil clan, I think it's appropriate to do dark mode. Not only is it easier on the eyes, in my opinion, it will also make everything in game nighttime, which for an evil clan that seems appropriate. I do want the background on. I do want it to automatically save in case of any crashes. And allow mass extinction events. I am toggling this on just to make it even harder. Cats will never retire due to permanent condition, so if we're playing an evil clan where everybody is being pushed to their absolute limit, even if they normally could retire due to an injury, I don't think they're going to be allowed to. Shaders, just for prettiness. I'm going to keep this off for right now. I'm still debating on whether I want the leader to automatically choose a new deputy. I think we're going to try and prioritize certain traits in deputies and leaders. But whether or not the leader would naturally choose those traits, I don't know. I'd rather not demote, promote every single deputy. We will allow dead cats to fade away, but I do want to save that, just look at it. And if we're playing a really antagonistic clan, I don't think anybody's going to want to be a mediator. For relationship settings, we're going to randomize relationship values when creating the clan, so it's actually starting off at a base. We will allow affairs and mate switches based on relationships. I'm keeping this off right now just to make it even harder, but I will be having same-sex pairings. Um, wow, and many cats have offspring. I'm actually going to toggle that off for right now. Allow romantic interactions with former apprentice's mentor. I'll toggle that on just to give us a bit more options. And I'll keep first cousins off and we'll go and save. So, I'm currently playing with the March release, 2023, and next, and we'll be sticking with this for the entirety of the series, so we'll go ahead and create a new clan. I don't think Cruel Season, yeah. So we'll be going on Expanded Mode, since that's a bit harder. I was going through what to name the clan without it, you know, sounding immediately edgy, like Blood Clan, Bone Clan. And ultimately, I decided on Talon Clan because that sounds really intimidating and harsh without being like, ha ha ha, everybody here is going to die. So, let's see what cats we get. Like I said, we're going to be prioritizing Bloodthirsty and other negative traits. Things like Bold wouldn't necessarily be bad either. Lonesome, Sneaky, Sneaky's a good one. Let's see, faithful, careful, sneaky, and nervous. So I'm not seeing anything like super bad here. The worst I'm seeing is sneaky. And there's quite a few loving cats. We could theoretically raise up some of these kits to not be... That one's got two eyes. 
or <laughs> two different colored eyes. I all have two eyes for now. Uh, so I think we'll go ahead and use one of our toggles there. Okay, so I do have an ambitious cat. Careful. Cold, lonesome, righteous, ambitious, strict, and compassionate. Okay, so we're kind of in the same boat with this one. We've got a couple of ambitious cats. Shirked could work. Hmm. I say, I would say that this is a better one than the last go. But I think I'm still going to reroll. We'll have one more after that. Shameless. Oof. Loyal. Oof. Loyal. Oof. Bold. Oof. Oof. Okay. Last chance. <laughs> okay. Well, unfortunately, everybody here is... <laughs> way too good for us, so we're gonna try that again. Okay, adventurous. Calm. Thoughtful. Ambitious. Oh, as another note, I will not be changing any cat names. Ooh, that's a fun one. Speaking of. I won't be changing any cat names um, unless there's like a queen that gives birth to the exact same kits or just there's a really common prefix running about. Oh, here we go. There's a really common prefix running about just because um, I want to keep that little RNG in there. But I definitely think that this is probably our best <laughs> pull here. I think we'll be going with Cliff Nettle, who has the only actual bloodthirsty trait. As a note as well, in this particular playthrough, I'm going to be playing it like the evil cats are the good guys and vice versa. So basically everybody who'd normally go to Star, Star Clan is going to go to the Dark Forest. So that will just be a little extra nuance here. Okay. I think we're going to go ahead. We'll make Cliff Metal, Cliff Star. And I do like Drake's now. Uh, Sneaky is probably the next best thing I can see. So I think we'll go with uh, Drake's now as deputy. Her medicine cat, I'm feeling Ragged Song here, who's strict. Uh, just somebody that is strict on healing, I think, is probably a fair trait to have for a medicine cat who's kind of, you know, stuck between healing and murder, so that's a pretty fair neutral option. So Pop Beam, as much as I love that name, is unfortunately not going to come with us. Uh, let's see. We'll take the kittens. And at least Daisy Paw is our apprentice here. So we should have at least one other warrior. Of these three, I kind of like the notion of Cypress Burrow. Like just a cat that's nervous about crossing their leader or deputy. So we'll go ahead and recruit them. Um. Let's see. I'm debating between these two because Twisted Paw has a loving personality, um, but could grow to become something darker. And then Running Cart, who is just careful, could be a nice neutral nature to help round some things out. Um, let's see. How many kids we got? We currently have three kids and one apprentice. I think I will go ahead and take Running Cart. And that is my final selection, so let's go ahead and go. I was debating on what environment I wanted to have them in, but I think I'm going to go ahead and do the tunnels here. Not only because of the dinosaur in the corner, but because just the notion of like these evil cats rising out of the ground to like attack their enemies or using this as a base of operation so that no enemy will come after them, I think is just a really fun 
option, so we'll go ahead and stick with that. And then here we are. So let's go ahead and we shouldn't have any events to start us off. But yeah, nothing there. So let's see. Our Star Clan guide, who we unfortunately can't do anything with, is Quiet Call, which I really like that notion of that name. And let's see, we've also got this Unknown Residence and the Dark Forest. So like I said, all the traditionally good cats will go to the Dark Forest and traditionally bad cats will go to Star Clan. Uh, just to keep things a bit more interesting here. So let's see. Our allegiances currently look like this. They've really updated a lot of the um, coat patterns here, which is really fun. Go smoke she cat. I really honestly like these updated allegiances a lot. <laughs> Okay, so we can say for our background for why this clan formed the way that it did is that Clistar and Drake Snout and probably to lesser extent the others were driven out of their old clan for their devious personalities and managed to bully, recruit, or steal other clan cats to make theirs a little bit stronger. So, pretty much all the apprentices and kits would have been stolen from other clans. Um, Ragged Song probably came along, and the others were probably bullied or otherwise convinced. So, that's kind of the basis for the clan. And part of the reason why Clistar has their nine lives is because of the uprising in Star Clan to give the Dark Forest cats those traditional powers, in effect. So,. We're basically just going to be playing the evil campaign. We're, like I said, going to be antagonizing everybody. We're going to proceed on every patrol. And we're going to see how far this gets us. It may not get us very far at all. Um, cats can become medicine cats, but it'll be prioritizing some of those neutral natures like strict or cold for medicine cats and less like bloodthirsty, for example. But bloodthirsty would be excellent in warriors, so... Now that we've got a look at that, let's see here. So Cliffstar wishes she was in her nest still sleeping. She's both thirsty, but a good teacher. She still has all nine lives remaining and she is 85 years old. Drake Snout is feeling underappreciated. He is sneaky and an excellent fighter. So he is pretty much exactly what we were looking for in this run. Uh, let's see. Ragged Song is tricked but a good teacher. Okay, that's pretty neutral. For an elder, he is on the younger side, which is great because we want him to last long enough to get an apprentice. Cypress Burrow is nervous and a great teacher. And she stumbles over her word, or I'm sorry, he stumbles over his words and are quite able to get it right, which I'm sure is very hard to do in this clan. Running Hard is currently patching up a hole in the camp wall, who's careful and also a good teacher. Daisy Paw is dreaming of someday making their clan proud. Excellent. Model Kit is five moons old, so he's going to be getting his apprenticeship very soon. And for right now, he's just impulsive and picking burrs out of his pelt. One Kit is impulsive as well, but is currently just relaxing camp. Sunny Kit is feeling excited and is bouncy, and that is currently our clan. Okay, so let's take a look at the relationships now. So Cliff Star has honestly pretty decent relationships with her clan. She's pretty much likes everybody and respects them. Uh, she probably has the greatest platonic like for Running Heart of all cats. And while she doesn't really like her medicine cat, she does respect and trust him. Drake Snout is honestly looking about the same. Ragged Song, let's see, doesn't really respect Lothar it looks like, which is fair. I could see like a older cat that just kind of came along to heal 
Not really holding a lot of respect for a very bloodthirsty leader that also probably gives him a lot of work to do. Um, but he generally gets along okay. Not as good as the others, so. Cypress Burrow really likes the kits and running cart, not much else. So running cart seems like the very um, popular character at the moment. Running cart likes just about everybody but Daisy Paw and one kit to a certain extent. Daisy Paw doesn't super duper like anybody, especially not Drake Snout. But Daisy Paw doesn't hate anybody either. Model Kit mostly seems like Sunny Kit. One Kit. Ooh, One Kit doesn't like Running Cart. <laughs> okay. And Sunny Kit likes everybody to various degrees, so. For the most part, we're showing okay relationships. And yeah, let's see. Daisy Paw's current mentor is Running Cart. Um, running Cart's trait is careful. So I think that's fine for right now. We'll go ahead and save that there. And something I haven't yet checked out that I want to actually is Medicine Cat Den. This is a new thing with the March update, so I just wanted to take a look at that. Your Medicine Cat can care for a clan of up to 26 members, including themselves. And we currently have no herbs, which is not good. Okay. That's a really fun add-on, honestly. Okay. So, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna send these guys out. I do <laughs> like to send the apprentices with their mentor, but the current update being what it is, I think it's really easy to do. So I'm going to do that unless the mentor or apprentice is otherwise unavailable. Um, I usually try and send out one patrol of each, but with as few cats as we have, we'll probably just have to make do. Okay. So Daisy Paw thinks she had a vision. I'm not going to be showing every single patrol just because that's a lot to feature, especially once the clan gets bigger. But for now, I'll at least show on screen what happens, even if I don't necessarily comment on it. Uh, I think he's going to be on by himself. So we managed to gather some marigold. Let's send out Leader and Deputy onto a border patrol. Ooh, new set of tunnels. Okay, so we found some new tunnels. This is something I haven't seen before. Cypress Burrow catches the scent of a fox, but is it red or swift? I don't know what that difference is. We had to proceed though. The swift vixen is scouting out potential dens for Greenleaf. Cypress Burrow realizes and brushes to warn her off. Okay. So it looks like they are just trying to scout out an area to have little fox cubs, and we don't want that on our territory. So let's go ahead and we'll time skip one moon. And sure enough, there's Model Kit becoming Model Paw with Cliff Star as her mentor, which is about exactly what I wanted, honestly. Ooh, what does this do? Oh, very nice, very nice. I can go directly to either Apprentice or <laughs> you end up having a vengeful nature, which is perfect. Um, so you can actually click here to see Mentor and Apprentice. I will be switching these around sometimes, depending, especially if it like assigns it to a queen that's otherwise unavailable. But let's see. I do like to scout through here, but I'll only be commenting on anything very strange or that makes sense for the story. Okay, I mean, honestly, everybody is pretty happy, <laughs> which is not really something I was expecting. 
Okay, let's see. Calm for our clan meeting. It's feeling unappreciated. Sure, I'm taking care of the clan. I would be too. Craving shrew. It's recently got humming. Wants to be a fierce warrior someday, and is staring off into space. I will be assigning uh, mates to cats here at Moon Six. I just want to give their relationships a bit of time to develop naturally, and then if there's anybody that has the um, the romantic like going up or really, really strong platonic like, those are going to be the ones I'm going to prioritize putting together. Just as an FYI. So let's go ahead. I think we'll send these guys out hunting. <laughs> Daisy Paul manages to steal a sandwich. Excellent. Okay. So I managed to get some ragwort, which is good. Let's send these guys to training. Oof. Alright. So, looks like Malpa fell into a hole while training and uh, Clistar has to walk them back to camp and Malpa got a bite wound from that. Okay, so we got one more thing to do for Porter. Alright, nothing antagonistic happens there, which is good. Okay, so we'll go ahead and time skip one more moon. Nothing interesting happened. There were some negative effects, but mostly just people talking about people. So let's see how everyone's doing. Okay, so it looks like Model Paw is currently in the Medicine Cat Den. Okay. So it looks like they cannot work with the bite condition. With the new update, cats won't necessarily become uh, warriors uh, when they hit 12 moons. So I can't even like send Daisy Paw out on patrol as like her last assessment or anything. It's just gonna have to be um, done whenever she becomes a full warrior. Which could be next moon or it could be a little while away. It just depends. Since everyone's training or experience is very low, it may well not be for a little while. So we'll go ahead and send these two back to training. Alrighty, so potential badger on the turf. Ragged Song doesn't manage to find any herbs. Let's send the star hunting by herself. They smell some two leg mush, but nothing awful happens. And they found another badger set. Okay. And I think we'll go ahead and save off the rest of year one for next episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that this is going to be interesting for everybody. It started off relatively tame this episode, but knowing my luck, things are not going to say that way. <laughs> so if you're interested in seeing more, please hit like and subscribe and just showcase your support in any way that you feel comfortable doing. This series will be uploaded on Mondays for the foreseeable future, really. I don't have a super deep timeline for this event. Uh, but I do hope that you all stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.